Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer here at Saratech. Today I'm going to give a quick video on dynamic analysis inside of FEMAP. So for this example, I have a, a simple bracket that is constrained at the base. Uh, I have two holes that are connected together with an RB2 element, which is constrained at six degrees of freedom at the center of node. I also have a mass element attached to the structure via an RBE3 element. So for this example, Let's go ahead and start by running a simple normal modes analysis. I'm going to right click on my analysis, say manage, hit a new solution, and for this it's going to be a normal modes eigenvalue solution. I'm going to hit next through a few of my options, and for this case I want to specify my range of interest up to 2000 Hz. By default it specifies the number desired, in this case I'm just interested up to 2000 Hz. I'm going to hit next, and for this one I want to go ahead and toggle on uh, participation factors. In this case, I want to know the modal uh, effective mass fraction as well. I'm going to grab, make sure I have my constraints because I want to run a constraint modal analysis. Let's go ahead and hit solve and look at these results. And this will take a, mo a moment to solve as well. All right, so now I have my solutions, my uh, frequencies. And I can go ahead and, and go through and, and look at those uh, mode shapes. One thing that I specified was those uh, mass participations. Let's go ahead and open up an FO6 file from that run. Um, as I scroll down, it is important to go ahead and check the mass. Uh, make sure that this is the mass of the structure in your FEMAP model as well. If you needed to use a weight mass parameter, please make sure you did so. If you did not, uh, please double check your mass and make sure everything is correct. Now in here, you'll notice here is my modal effective mass fraction um, in my translation and rotations and my modal participation factors here shown as well. You can also take those informations uh, from the FEMAP functions, it reads them directly in. So I'm gonna grab my uh, mass sum, and I'm gonna look at T1, T2, and T3. Just right click on them, and I can say show in charting, and it's gonna create this chart for me, and I can go ahead and plot this information. Oh, one thing that I would like to show quickly is, uh, so T1, uh, for my results, uh, mode one has 90% uh, of the mass. Notice it's moving in that X direction, mode two, now has, we'll just say 85 plus um, in T3, and you notice it's moving in the Z direction. And it doesn't take till mode four till this structure starts moving in the Y, and you'll notice right here in the Y direction, uh, we'll snap to a view, and if I animate it, you'll notice that it's moving up and down in the Y direction, which makes sense. So next step for our solution is we're gonna do a frequent response, frequency response to the structure, and I'm gonna accelerate it in the Y direction. I already defined the load, and I'll just display it. So what I did was I applied a 386 uh, inches per second squared uh, acceleration to this base node. Um, so for our response, we're probably gonna get our most response around uh, mode four, which is about 290 Hertz. Uh, and you can tell based on our results from our simple modal analysis. So to set up our uh, frequency response, let's go ahead and delete these functions for now just to clean it up. I went ahead and defined structural damping versus frequency, and I just said I want 5% uh, structural damping across the frequency band. And I even went past my 2000 Hertz, but that's okay. I just uh, made sure I had that same uh, damping defined. Right click on our analysis, manage. We're gonna create a new solution, and this time it's going to be a frequency harmonic response. We're gonna hit next. And then for this type of solution, I like to turn on residual vectors. I'm going to hit next, and when we get to our modal analysis form, I'm going to run a modal solution type, not direct, and my range of interest, I'm just going to put 2000 hertz here again. Let's hit next. Now we get to our Nastran dynamic analysis form. First thing that you need to define is your damping. We already created that damping table, so let's go ahead and link it here. And you need to define your solution frequency, so these will be your frequency uh, cards that you can define. So you see you have your freak, freak 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as well. I already created uh, uh, three frequency cards, uh, freak 1, freak 3, and freak 4. Um, and we can go ahead and look at them uh, quickly um, throughout here. So some of these numbers uh, might be a little bit high. 
go ahead and uh, toggle toggle that down. I guess I gotta hit this update button here. There we go. All right. So now I have um, my values, and and if you want to learn more about you know what exactly are these frequency uh, cards do, those are available in the the quick reference guide. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now I have my load and my constraint. And for this case, I want to request stress. Uh, most of the time, you, you don't want to request uh, all these things for the entire model. Uh, but for simplicity in this example, I'm just going to do it for the full model um, and go from there. So now I have my frequency response analysis set up. And let me go ahead and hit that solution. All right, so that went ahead and uh, sent it off to the solver. And it is solving the solution as we uh, wait for it to be completed. Okay, now our solution has been completed. We can go ahead and uh, post-process these results. You notice um, for results, I have my frequency at 20 hertz, and it ends down here at 2,000 hertz based on those frequency cards that I specified. So I did get um, you know, uh, 400, and 400 and some outputs for this case. Uh, your outputs are going to depend on those frequency cards. So I can go ahead and post-process information. Maybe I'm looking at, in this case, I have plate top on me stress and I can go ahead and look at uh, you know different frequencies it might make sense to go ahead and envelope this information so you can look at a maximum value throughout the entire frequency band but due to time constraints let's just go ahead and um, assume that we enveloped and we looked at our stress results one important thing if you are running uh, frequency response analysis like this I highly recommend doing a simple check is just checking to make sure that you applied your load correctly um, so what I'm going to do is create a new function, and then from here I'm going to do a data series manager. It looks like I have some stored in there. Create a new data series, and for this case, I want to know my vector versus set. I want to know the output set value, and I want to start at that mode, that frequency 20, uh, from my frequency response analysis all the way through 2000. And if you remember, um, I applied this acceleration. Um, in this T2 acceleration, and I want to know it for uh, these two nodes. So it's going to go ahead and grab uh, T2 acceleration for those two two nodes um, throughout that frequency band. I can hit OK, and now I do have my results. So now, just looking at uh, my results, uh, make sure that your in this one my node. Uh, was, what do I have, 500,000? It's just at a constant 386. If I wanted to, you know, investigate that a little bit more, I could go ahead and, you know, uh, put on my labels and things like that. But it is at this 386 across the frequency band. And then I, you notice that I do have a very large um, excitation. And going back to our original results, that's around that 300 uh, hertz, as you see here. So we got that uh, big spike. Uh, due to that mode right there. So it's a nice little check. So now that I ran my frequency response, the next thing is to run random response. Let's right click on analysis, manage, create a new solution, and this time we're going to go ahead and hit random response. Now before I get ahead of myself, I went ahead and created a function for my ASD or PSD, and it's shown here. Um, so I have my frequency and my factor, and this is just a simple um, ASD that I found online. And it's make sure it's versus uh, frequency in this case. So for my random analysis, let's go ahead and set this one up. So just like before, I'm going to turn on residual vectors. And I'm going to run a modal solution type here. I'm going to grab this 2000 hertz. Uh, it's just a habit that I like to do. Um, I'm going to grab these frequencies. So I'm going to use that those same frequency cards. I'm going to use the same damping that I specified before. And now for random analysis, you're going to get this new window. What type of nodal output request would you want? An elemental output request are you interested in? Um, if you would like to create uh, uh, charts as well, so you, I could specify displacement or acceleration in T2 direction. I want to get PSDF output. And it's going to ask me for, if I specify nodal information, it's going to ask me for a group of nodes. I already created for the random nodes, which is just the, the input and the mass element. 
You're going to link your PSD here, or ASD. Be careful with units. Uh, please be consistent. Um, I have my load zone constraints, and then any sort of output that I'm interested in. So in this case, maybe I'm interested in uh, stress output. I can go ahead and toggle on uh, stress here. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and solve this model. So you can see over here it has uh, solved, uh, sent the solution over here to Nastran, and you can follow along uh, with some information here, or you can look um, where your model has been saved or wherever you're outputting information. So this should be uh, completed shortly. And it looks like our solution is complete. And it lets you, uh, brings a message that says, okay to read your PSD versus frequency functions. So if you specify that, it's going to give you this window to, to read them into FEMAP. So you'll have those available to post-process those functions. So looking at uh, your results here, might make sense to grab our study for a random analysis. You notice that we get our XY plot summary, if you have that. You have RMS values, positive crossings, CRMS, cumul cumulative RMS and your PSDF values as well. Um, for this case, let's just uh, quickly post-process. You can look at RMS values. Um, so this is RMS values for plate top uh, stresses. You typically would want to multiply this value by three to capture 99.7% of the results. Another thing that you might want to do is, let's go ahead and look at um, our output uh, as these uh, acceleration PSDFs that we have here. Um, so. We can go to our charting again. Some more real estate here. Let's clear this one out. And let's create a new data series. So since we already have um, those functions, we can go ahead and grab function. And we want to know our acceleration of those two nodes, just like before. Uh, now, an important thing is with units, and please be careful with your units. Um, we want to scale this a little bit. Um, our ASD was uh, defined here as g squared per hertz, and I had an acceleration of 386 inches per second squared. Therefore, my response is in inches per second squared. squared. And to get this to plot in g squared per hertz, I need to multiply this 1 over g squared. So I'm just going to type 1 divided by, and I'll just do 386 times 386. There we go. So now I'm just scaling uh, these results. And this should be uh, plotted here in a second. So here are my results. Um, it's a little difficult to, to see, but you notice that I still have a huge amplification around this 300 hertz. And it might make sense to go ahead and uh, toggle on a, a logarithmic, a logarithmic uh, plot here. So let's go ahead and grab X, logarithmic scale, hit apply. And let's grab our Y as well, hit apply. There we go. So now I have my, my acceleration um, in the second de degree of freedom for my uh, PSDF of my input and my input node and the node of the mass element. So that is a quick uh, introduction to dynamic analysis in the FEMAP. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.